If you really want to accomplish something worthwhile, often there's more than one way to go about it. Nowhere is this more evident than in the world of gardening. But despite the hundreds of varieties of crops we grow, in the end, the way we plant them usually boils down to two options. The no-nonsense direct seeding right out into the garden, or the familiar crop started early indoors to get a jump on spring. Both tried and tested, valid ways to grow, but which one is better? Hi, I'm Jeff from the Ripe Tomato Farms, and today we're going to be looking at that age-old question of seeds versus starters. Which one is better, and which way should we be planting our crops this year? Buckle up, we got a bit of a spicy one today. Because as much as most of us hate to admit it, there's more than one right way to plant a garden. Whenever you're trying to decide between two different ways to do something, it's always best to make a pros versus cons list. Direct seeding versus growing from starter plants is no different. So let's do just that. On the one hand, you have direct seeding. It's cheaper, easier, more simple, and no special tools are necessary. It is, however, more prone to failure, shortens your growing window while you wait, and in the end, you're kind of stuck with the plants that come up. There's no choice. For starter plants, we have some distinct advantages. We can get a massive head start in the spring so that we're productive and growing even when the weather isn't cooperating. By doing this, we can also lengthen the growing window for those long fruiting crops that need it. As well, we're able to essentially guarantee that every plant that goes into the garden is going to be a success. Because not only is it so advanced in growth, it'll also be hand-picked from the best of the best. Now, it is time-consuming though, and it can also be more expensive. You'll need several soils, multiple sizes of containers, and you're going to need some serious space indoors. On top of all that, LED grow lights have kind of become a necessity, unless you want to deal with unruly, leggy seedlings. To me, it looks like there's a whole pile of reasons for and against both direct seeding and indoor starters. So, which one should we use? Which one is better? Well, in my opinion, it's always best to let the plants decide. For some crops, it's nearly logistically impossible to start them anywhere but where you intend to grow them in the garden. I'm thinking of things like beets, carrots, and even radishes. Transplanting hundreds or even thousands of little seedlings of these popular root crops would be a modern form of garden torture. No thanks. Not to mention, disturbing that taproot early on in development would have real-world negative effects on the outcome of the crops. Other crops like peas and corn, while they can be started early, there's little sense in doing so. It's because they grow so fast. It's just way easier to direct sow them right in place in the garden when the soil warms up. And if you're worried about poor germination or plant selection, you can sow two to three seeds per location and then thin to the strongest one once the plants get going. Easy stuff. Next, we have plants in the melon family, such as watermelon, honeydew, and these cantaloupe seeds here. Heck, I'll even throw cucumbers into the mix too. Historically, these guys just straight up don't like transplanting. I've seen it firsthand, and it always seems to set them back. They just appear to be way more susceptible to transplant shock than your average crop is. Therefore, direct seed these guys in zones 8 or higher, but... If you are worried about your length of summer, length of a growing window, you can start them off in biodegradable paper pots. They can be planted as is, and you'll never have to disturb the root systems. When it's all said and done, we direct sow when it's easier. When either transplanting is a complete pain, or the plants simply don't like it. And that's fine. But what about method number two? Indoor starter plants, my bread and butter. If there's a more ritualistic, regimented act in all of gardening, I've yet to see it.
My rule with plants is if I can start them early indoors or in the top shelf of my greenhouse, I will. I will always choose to pre-sprout and grow my crops for everything, save for peas, corn, and those mass seeded root crops that we talked about earlier. For everything else, including these Roma tomatoes and this summer squash here, I'm starting them early indoors every winter, every year for the past 15 seasons. I've got it down to such a science, it's more routine than brushing my teeth. Tomatoes, peppers, eggplants, cucumbers, zucchinis, lettuces, chards, and even watermelons and cantaloupes. Hey, onions are pre-started this way as well, and so are herbs, like cilantro and basil. The process is simple. I count backwards about two months from my last spring frost date for that year, and that gives me my planting window. Usually, late January is when I'm putting my first seeds to soil. Speaking of, if you're wondering how seeding soil differs from regular potting soil, check out the video in the top right corner. Like clockwork, in just a few weeks the seedlings sprout, grow, and transform into spectacular little plants that are given this massive head start. Think about it. If a particular variety of plant is 120 days seed to harvest, but you've only got 90 warm days to grow, well, you're going to have to start them early. There's no way around it. But aside from a huge head start and lengthening that growing window, starting your seeds elsewhere has another major advantage. And that's freeing up valuable space and time. Let me explain. It's simple. If one of my tomato varieties takes 90 days to grow, but 50 of those days are done inside, then that leaves a huge window both before and after they're grown in the garden. Space that can be used to grow peas, radishes, or even a quick crop of lettuce. Hi. Okay. So instead of a single crop occupying this bed, I can now grow three crops in the same space in the same year. Triple the production for no extra cost in materials or space. And in fact, when you count these Brussels sprouts, I even got a fourth crop in. And like we mentioned before, whenever you're growing starters, you get to be picky. The process enables us to grow a little more than we need. So if anything were to happen to any of these plants, they're easily replaced and we get to pick the best specimens. Don't discount the value of this because when it comes time to plant out in the garden, we can choose the most optimum plants. This basically ensures that we're going to have the best possible outcome. And on top of all that, if you grow more starter plants than you can use, you can trade or sell the excess to your neighbors to help offset your costs. It's a win-win. So when it's all said and done, which is the better way to plant? Well, I'm going to take the easy way out here and say that they're both excellent methods for starting a garden. Honestly, the method you choose is going to depend on your climate and the crop itself. Both strategies can have a place in your backyard garden simultaneously. And with that, I think we covered it all. It did feel like a lot though, didn't it? So let's recap those main points to make sure that we're not too biased one way or the other. No matter how long we've been growing a garden, we all develop preferences for how we do things. Fortunately, plants also have their preferences. And when we're deciding between direct seeding and starting them early indoors, well, it's smart to let the plants decide. Mass seeded root crops are pretty much all direct seeded, obviously, as are quick growers and poor transplanters. For all other plants, from brassicas to peppers, herbs to tomatoes, we can grow them either way. If you need the extra growing time because of a short summer, well, the choice is made for you. You're going to have to start your plants early. Also, if you want to multi-crop your beds in one season and you've got the space for the plants for the early part of their life cycle indoors, well, then you can start them early as well. In all other instances, it's honestly a toss-up, with both advantages and disadvantages. Ah, the beauty of gardening. Seeds versus starters. I don't think the debate will ever truly be over. 
people have their preferences, as well as their familiarities with how they've grown in the past. That factors into it. But, as we've seen with each plant, each crop is going to have an optimal way to grow for your garden. Your job is to figure out which way that is and have a little fun and a lot of success in the process. Hey, happy growing guys. I'll see you in the next one. Hey, thanks so much for watching guys. I appreciate the support more than you know. And if you're getting value from these videos, please like and share them to spread the word and help your fellow gardener to grow better.